What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. Today what I want to talk about is actually Pokemon that got buffed into Generation 9 uh, that weren't viable before but they have some new tools that while it won't make them like the strongest Pokemon ever, uh, they're worth noting and I want to discuss them in today's video. So yeah, uh, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. Uh, and answer my comment question of the day, which is, what Pokemon received a buff this gen that you think is actually going to become viable? But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. These are all Pokemon, by the way, that people have commented about to me, that people were like, hey, I need you to make like a video about this one. And I'm like, look, it's probably not going to be that great, but like I can put them all together in a video and that's probably more conducive to discussing the topic of these buffs. So yeah, let's get into it. Uh, I put these in order from least viable to most viable, uh, like depending on like what their buff was. So yeah, uh, number one on my list, or I guess number five, whatever you want to call it, it's going to be Masquerade. So Masquerade is a really interesting Pokemon. It's a bug and flying type, which is a really awful typing. Uh, but that being said, it has a great ability in Intimidate, uh, and it has access to Tailwinds. This is post-editing Marcos. I didn't say it in the video, but the buff is Hurricane. It didn't get Hurricane before. It's a strong move, though. Uh, it's, it's probably not that great. Anyways, back to present day, Marcos. My bad. So the way that it's historically been ran is just like as a Focus Sash Tailwind Setter with Intimidate. Uh, I have seen some U-turn variants, but I think in this format, Haze is actually much more valuable considering there's still the uh, Don Dozos running around and Sash Haze makes it much easier to deal with. Uh, we do occasionally see some Garganicals running Iron Defense still. Uh, we see just bulk up Sword Stance. Like this is the setup generation. Like there's a ton of Pokemon that want to set up on you. And having a Sash Haze user could go very far, especially with a built-in uh, initial Intimidate. It could make it easier to live hits if your Sash is broken uh, and then removing the stats uh, altogether. So yeah, uh, I think that Masquerade occupies a really strange niche. So if we look at like the most used Pokemon in the format, uh, basically all that Masquerade is going to be able to do is like, I don't know, in the face of Murkrow, Golden Go, you can probably just match the Tailwind because they're not going to taunt a Masquerade. They probably don't think it's all that worth it. Uh, in the face of Garchomp, uh, that Ice Beam, while it won't always one shot, is actually still significant damage. Because uh, if we actually just take a look at like the damage that you can expect from this thing versus like a, a standard Garchomp, right? Um, yeah, Ice Beam 107 to 126, that's with like max special attack investment. But I have seen some Garchomps that don't run like max, max bulk. They can easily invest to live this, especially considering most of the time they're going to Terra Ground. And Terra Ground brings it down to a two shot. That being said, that Intimidate is really useful for taking uh, the Dragon Claw. But you have to hope that they're not a Rock Slide variant. Uh, because Rock Slide variants could really mess you up. Uh, Masquerade also does benefit from Terra. So if you really want to... It, I, I don't know what the best Terra would be for this thing, maybe Fairy, uh, because if you're running uh, Flying type, you're still going to get like KO'd by a lot of Rock Slides. That being said, it powers up your Hurricane, uh, and it does make you still immune to Earthquake, but if you want to run like Terra Ground to resist most of the things that uh, Bug is weak to, or like not get one shot by them, uh, then that's going to be like kind of iffy, because then you're going to be weak to... Uh, water moves or ice moves like it's 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 really annoying for masquerade but I think what you want to do if you want to make it somewhat bulky is you actually have to go for a typing that uh, is more capable of walling out common offensive moves so I think steel isn't that bad of an option while you are going to be weaker to like earthquake uh, masquerade with intimidate won't drop to a single earthquake especially if you invest uh, to do that sort of thing uh, but beyond that like the the special moves that hit uh, steel types usually like flamethrower. Uh, Masquerade has 70 HP and 82 de special defense. While that isn't like the best, you can definitely invest to live it. So yeah, Masquerade, probably like the least viable on this list, but I still find it uh, notable enough to talk about. Uh, number two is going to be Toxicroak. Toxicroak actually now got close combat, which it feels like it always got, but apparently it didn't. And the reason it always felt like this um, is because it usually ran low kick and we only ever saw it in like restricted formats. So low kick is a move that does more damage dependent on the weight of the target. And you would only really see Toxicroak show up when like Kyogre was common in previous VGC formats, uh, where we were allowed to use restricted Pokemon. So it would run like dry skin low kick because low kick at like max power is either 120 or 130, I forget. Um, but it would deal significant damage to like everything in the format. 
Uh, in non-restricted formats, Toxicroak was much less viable uh, due to the fact its fighting stab was extremely weight dependent. Um, but now that it has close combat, uh, it actually makes up a lot for like the things that it struggles with. So 85 speed isn't the best, but that does allow you to be faster than Golden Go. Uh, so what you could do is run like Sucker Punch Focus Sash. And that turn one, you Sucker Punch the Golden Go to try to get some damage on it. If they end up going for Terra Steel, the next turn you can follow it up with a Close Combat and always KO. If they Terra Steel beforehand, Close Combat is actually going to be dealing a significant amount of damage. Let's actually take a look at this one. Uh, Toxic Croak. Do do Toxic Croak versus Golden Go. Uh, let's make it Terra Steel. And yeah, your Close Combat's always going to one shot. Uh, other than that, like I said, the Sucker Punch does a decent amount. Uh, 45 to 53, so it could be a two shot if they end up uh, not uh, terrestrializing. Um, and yeah, uh, poison fighting's generally good coverage. Uh, where most fighting types don't want to deal with opposing fairy types, uh, Toxicroak sort of invites it in because it has access to poison jab. You could also run gunk shot, but I think that if you want to be consistent, poison jab's going to be the better option. Uh, and in this format, if you really want to, if you really want to help out with the Dondoza matchup in a way that isn't just taking uh, no damage from Wave Crash, you could do Poison Touch Close Combat and hope for the best, or Poison Touch Fake Out. These are all things that are really interesting. But yeah, Toxicroak, uh, not not like the most viable, but definitely better than Masquerade. Uh, and it does benefit so much from getting Close Combat this gen. I actually just got a shiny one in game, so I'm looking to use it. Uh, number three on my list is going to be Floatzel, which is really weird because I always thought Floatzel was like a garbage tier Pokemon, and it has been. It really, really has been, but it got access to two really important moves this gen, Ice Spinner and Wave Crash. Prior to this, its best ice move was like Ice Punch, which is 75, and while Ice Spinner is only, uh, only uh, a little bit stronger, it does really benefit from that because of the fact that uh, Floatzel has that pretty low attack stat at 105. Um, it's also a Swift Sim user, but the biggest buff that it has to it this gen uh, is twofold. Wave Crash is a 120 base power move that coming off of any attack stats, gonna hurt, uh, it's going to hit like a truck, right? Uh, and you can run a Life Orb on that thing to deal more damage. But uh, while Intimidate isn't all that common anymore because people have noticed that uh, Clear Amulet's like really annoying along with like Annihilate, if you want to run Clear Amulet to be safe, that's still an option. And you can even run like Water Veil if you're not running like a Swift Swim team. But that being said, always run Swift Swim. Do not not run Swift Swim. Uh, I think the only thing that can make this guy a lot better is if it had access to close combat. That would actually make it kind of like a, a really insane Pokemon. Uh, but Float Soul, just looking at it on paper versus Garchomp, you're going to always outspeed it if you have your... Uh, if they have their Tailwind up, you, you always outspeed it in the rain, meaning that your Ice Spinner is going to do a lot of damage. If they decide to Terrastalize, your Wave Crash is always going to KO. It's actually a really threatening Pokemon in that sense. Uh, versus other like super super common pokemon golden go doesn't like taking the hit either if we look at golden go damage uh, i actually highly recommend terra water for this set by the way let's say the rain is up because that's the only way you're really going to want to take on golden go uh your wave crash will always one shot golden go with a life orb so this is kind of a crazy pokemon i'm not gonna lie this is a really insane pokemon that i want to look into and i think it's like crazy viable right now despite the fact uh people are running it makes me sad to say people are running like Dreadnought right now, which is just really weird. But this thing has positive matchups into Armor Rouge. Uh, under Tailwind, it can outspeed Meowskarada and hit it with an Ice Spinner, which I think that KOs, to be honest. Let me see. Yeah, it's so weird to like say that something KOs, but no, uh, Ice Spinner doesn't actually KO, but it comes pretty close. So any chip damage and you're guaranteed. Otherwise, it's a roll. So yeah, uh, th this thing's really weird. Uh, and I think that all it really needed was these two moves to get it going because 105 115 isn't bad that's a pretty high base speed for this format you're outspeed like in previous formats in previous formats faster or no it's slightly slower than whimscott but it's like on par with whimscott speed you know it's faster than tornadoes which is actually gonna be really interesting when restricted's come back because tornadoes kyogre plus like float soul could be a thing uh but yeah probably not though the second to last one i have on this list is going to be trick room on spiritomb uh, Trick Room feels like a long time coming. Also, it now is the like one of the few Pokemon with Ally Switch, but Trick Room was a long time coming. Uh, this is a Pokemon that had trouble doing anything. Uh, it had 50 HP, or it has 50 HP, 108 in both defenses, and like 92 special attack and attack. Like, it could hit things pretty hard with Foul Play. It could hit things pretty hard with Snarl if you really wanted to. Like, er, not hard, but like it would like deal a lot of... Uh, 
like debuffs over the course of a match and be like really annoying. Has access to Will-O-Wisp, it had every tool it needed, but it didn't have Trick Room. Well, I don't think it's the best Trick Room setter right now. If we look at like the other Pokemon in that uh, niche, it's as far as like speed tiers go, this is one of the slower ones because like the better ones right there, Hatterene I don't actually think is all that good, but it's going to be like Bronzong is the slowest like viable one. And then there's Spiritomb. And then like you have to go up pretty high. Like it's going to be Farigaraf or Ranguru, which are at 60 base speed. Uh, and also like Armourouge, which is probably the best Trick Room setter right now. Uh, and yeah, like it, it, there there aren't a lot of really great Trick Room setters. Meowscarada is arguably like a really good Trick Room setter, funny enough. Uh, but yeah, Spiritomb having that niche of being like really slow, being able to burn uh, and like tank hits from Garchomp, from Dondozo, being able to smack things with Will-O-Wisp. Does this thing get Haze? It doesn't get haste, but it does get helping hand, which is really good too. Uh, it, it's like, it's the most supportive trick room Pokemon, I think. Uh, and and yeah, like it's it's basically just like a debuff machine with foul play on it. So I think that that actually helps out quite a bit. I don't think it's gonna be the best Pokemon, but it did recently top cut a tournament, but that was also a really weird set that they had on it. I forget what it was. I think they like, I think they like skill swapped unaware onto it or something, but. Yeah, honestly, if Spiritomb did have Unaware, that'd be great. Uh, another thing it really needs is Reliable Recovery, because Pain Split, while it is like a really nice move coming off of low HP, uh, it doesn't it doesn't really like get the job done. It's it's very unreliable as far as recovery goes. Uh, and in previous formats, you know, Dusclops out outclassed this guy by a long shot because they had similar stats. Uh, but like, actually, yeah, no, like. Dusclops is just like explicitly better now that I think about it, uh, especially with Eviolite. Like Eviolite made Dusclops like a menace, but yeah, Spiritomb now has access to a couple of cool things uh, that Dusclops doesn't like Snarl, like Helping Hand. Actually, no, it gets Helping Hand, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure it gets Helping Hand, but yeah, Spiritomb, nice little buff there. And the final one, the thing that arguably made a Pokemon actually viable this gen, like straight up crazy, uh, is Gallade getting access to Sharpness, which is a brand new ability that increases slicing attacks by 1.5. Uh, if you don't know what the list of slicing attacks is, uh, it's like Sacred Sword, all of the slash moves, like Psycho Cut, Night Slash, Slash, uh, Aerial Ace is on that list for some reason. Uh, funny enough, Population Bomb is on that list, but Gallade gets like the most benefit out of this in my opinion, because it has 125 attack, 80 speed, that's slower than Golden Go, which is bad, but like it also has like decent special defense and like, eh, like pretty bad HP, but yeah, uh, it has like the tools it needs to do stuff. So obviously Swords Dance is really scary, but I think you're always gonna run like Protect Sash. What this allows uh, Gallade to do is be a solid lead in almost any situation. If your opponent has a setup mod, your Sacred Sword doesn't care about like defense boosts, like Organical gets annihilated, Don Dozo gets annihilated. Uh, you go for Sacred Sword and with 90 times 1.5, that's 135 base power, which is actually, uh, it's stronger than close combat. It has more PP and it ignores stat drops. So you always run Sacred Sword on this guy instead. Uh, beyond that, your Psycho Cut is better than Zen Headbutt now. Uh, it has a high crit ratio, meaning that it has the chance to ignore uh, stat drops as well. Uh, but now it's 105 base power after the sharpness boost. Coming off of 125 attack, like that's way, 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 way too strong for a lot of Pokemon to tank. This thing actually becomes like a menace in VGC because of it. Uh, but I think the biggest thing that allows it to do what it needs to do uh, without being just like really, really, really mid is it has access to Trick Room, meaning that Gallade not only is going to be a hard stop to set up Pokemon, but if Pokemon require Trick Room turn one, what they tend to do is fake out the Pokemon that can like stop the Trick Room setter and then Trick Room on them. Gallade being a Focus Sash user can pretty much always just reverse the Trick Room turn one and allow the Pokemon next to them to get a KO. And then the next turn, like Cycle Cut will, or Cycle Cut or Sacred Sword will pick up on like whatever it needs to. Uh, Pokemon in the format that lose to Gallade, uh, if Golden Go decides to Terra Steel, it gets one shot by Sacred Sword. Amoongus can get one shot by Cycle Cut. Um, Meowth gets one shot by Sacred Sword. Indeedy like gets two shot by Sacred Sword, I'm pretty sure, but it's like really, really bad for Indeedy to even take that hit. Rotom Wash gets chunked. Gargantical gets annihilated. King Gambit gets annihilated. Dondozo gets annihilated. Tyranitar gets annihilated. Uh, yeah, there aren't a lot of Pokemon that can switch in on a Gallade, which is a really weird thing to say this gen. And all it needed was this ability. That's a crazy ability. I think Gallade is low key, like really good right now, but uh, a lot of people don't respect it quite yet. But yeah. Uh, Gallade, very good. Spiritomb, okay. Floatzel, arguably, like, better than Spiritomb. Uh, Toxicroak, pretty okay. 
Uh, Masquerade, kind of bad, but still a nice buff for it. Uh, yeah, or I didn't even mention the buff, did I? It was Hurricane. <laughs> I just realized I didn't even mention the buff. It didn't get Hurricane before. I'm pretty sure I... Yeah. I just, like, completely forgot to mention that. I'll throw it in the notes. The buff is Hurricane, by the way. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video. Subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.